Assalamu alaikum. And I begin with the name of Allah, the compassionate and merciful. And I testify that there is no deity to worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace and prayers on him, is a slave servant and messenger of Allah. And I ask Allah to guide our hearts and our tongues and our hands. And I seek his refuge for myself and for you from the evils of disbelief and the poverty from the rejected Satan and from misleading and being misled and deceiving and being deceived. Um, this is part two of the last one, which was subconscious minds of Muslims and music. This part two here is uh, the subconscious minds of Muslims and white supremacy. And in the last clip, I mentioned certain verses in Surah Baqarah that uh, sort of point out to the human being his own subconscious mind. Well, in that last recording, I pointed to the uh, relationship between the subconscious mind and how people are brainwashed through music that is clearly forbidden because if only the Muslims who are debating about the subject of music being forbidden are put into a room, they would agree on which types of music are forbidden, they would agree on what can clearly make uh, music forbidden without argument. They can agree on some things that um, indisputably make music forbidden. And these exact same things upon which they could agree, such as uh, evil lyrics and evil content, evil, evil ideas being promoted or even normalized, um, are now in the music. 77% of it. And I mentioned this. Well, I'm going to mention in this recording uh, how the subconscious mind uh, plays the role in Muslims accepting white supremacy. Um, many are going to say, well, you know, they colonized us. And that's how we began to That's how this tribe began to really become obsessed with it, and that tribe did, and this nationality, you know, they were colonized by the French or colonized by the British. And in doing so, they're going to say that this is where they got this from. Well, in many countries, such as in the Arab world and in the subcontinent, this colorism existed before they were ever colonized by any European. But I closed out of the last one by saying that uh, it is actually the Muslims from these two regions the most that act as though they have no subconscious mind at all because they're aware of every assumption they've ever made uh, and they cannot be brainwashed because they're just so clever and so aware. And I said that with sarcasm because in reality um, they're very unaware and they're more easily brainwashed than other people I found. I mean, Latin Americans are not as easily brainwashed. How do we know? Well, Latin Americans recently have uh, developed a consciousness movement, and it's in Costa Rica, and in Mexico, uh, and in Brazil, and Colombia has had it for generations, maybe, and it's in Venezuela. So you've got more African Latin Americans that are now uh, saying, we will no longer accept to feel ashamed or minimized in our heritage. Uh, we now insist that our heritage is normal. And it is as worthy as any other heritage. Muslims, let that sink in for a moment. African origin Latin Americans and even Latin Americans without an African origin are coming to appreciate African origin more and see it as no less and will fight the brainwashing to which they've been subjected to teach them to see it as being less. They ain't Muslim. A lot of them ain't read no translation of the Quran, let alone the Quran itself. Ain't read it in English, ain't read it in Spanish, ain't read it in any language, Portuguese, Dutch, Japanese, you name it, they ain't read it. They're fighting this. Muslim world. No counter movement to white supremacy as we know it. 
What this means is that in actuality, it is the Muslim world, specifically the Arab and the subcontinent worlds, that do not have a self-awareness and therefore don't even think of their own subconscious minds and the assumptions that they make without thinking about it. They don't understand anything that is cerebral. What is the reason? I don't care. Honestly, I don't give a rat's behind what the reason is. No, seriously, once you have read the Quran and you understand its meaning in your own language, you are not allowed to be that damn stupid. You're not allowed to walk around with your subconscious mind running all of your thoughts and making all of your decisions for you and you don't have any sort of question in your head as to why you're making these decisions. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to have a subconscious mind. All humans do. But you are not allowed to let your subconscious rule you from where you cannot see it. Because what enemy in the Quran can see us from where we cannot see him? It's the devil. Well, if your subconscious mind rules you because you never question yourself and you have no introspection, then it can be used against you by the other enemy that can see you from where you cannot see him because he can then just use your very own subconscious mind against you. That is the devil's main weapon against people, their own subconscious minds. Yes, there is a devil. It's in the Quran. Yes, we cannot see him. Yes, he can whisper directly into our hearts, meaning into our subconscious. No, we don't have to listen because if we really start thinking about this sort of thing, we can understand our own subconscious minds and that of others. I'm sorry. If you are Muslim, if you claim to be Muslim, then you need to actually be Muslim. And if you are Muslim, then you cannot allow yourself to be that goddamn stupid to where people that aren't surpass you in breaking chains from their minds. Some of you will say, well, if they break the chain of, of racial uh, uh, brainwashing and in the inf racial inferiority complexes from their minds, but they don't break the chains of shirk from their minds, what good does it do? I, I, I want to flip that question. If you think you're breaking the chains of shirk from your minds and you haven't broken the chains of white supremacy off of your brains, then what makes you think you broke the chain of shirk? White supremacy is a religion, and it is a hidden shirk. That's a shirk. That's a disbelief. That is associating partners with a law. If you have not broken that chain off your mind, then how is it that the white man to you is not another god to rival a law in your subconscious mind? Believe me, if you ain't broke the chains of white supremacy off of your mind, then that white man and that white woman, that white western world is a rival to a law in your eyes, and you just don't know it. Allah says, they say, and you do what they say and disobey Allah. Not because you're forced to with a gun to your head or even threatened with jail time. No, just because. What is the proof? I mentioned it before. When your country says you got to have auto insurance and you have, auto, you have automobile insurance, because if you don't, you go to jail, that's compulsion. And I'm not addressing that. I'm not blaming you for that. But when the culture says, well... We want to impress them and we want to be accepted by them, so let's do things that will make us more accepted by them, even in terms of our marriage. Let's throw lavish weddings to prove that we're not all just a bunch of poor peasants like they think in their stereotypes. And let's marry the palest among us that we can marry so that they don't all see us as being brown. Wait a minute. So if they stereotype you as all being one complexion, and that's dark, and all being of one socioeconomic class, which is poor, and all of you as being ignorant, so goddamn what? What does that matter to you what they think? If they're that stupid, you shouldn't be worried about it. Knowing what they think so that you understand how they'll treat you and you're prepared for it is one thing. Worrying about what they think so that you can try to prove them wrong is altogether different. That's an inferiority complex. What do you think that black people in southern Africa think about you, like in Zimbabwe and Zambia. Well, they probably think you're racist. Do you care? No, you don't. It, you don't give a rat's behind. So what if they think you're racist? You actually don't like them. Europeans, they think you hate them and want to kill them and blow them up, and you care. You got out of your way to show that you're kind to them and they don't respect it. Subconsciously speaking, you have been tricked into worrying about one and not the other. 
One victimized you and, and colonized and oppressed you, and you care what they think. The other one was another victim of the same colonizer and oppressor, and you don't care what they think, even though you were supposed to have the blueprint for their liberation too. The subconscious mind, if you do not understand it, will accept white supremacy. I'll leave you with this. There was a very intelligent man from a Middle Eastern country who was studying in the United States. And he's still studying there. And he's still very intelligent. And uh, one day he was actually arguing against his own blood relative in defense of an African American that was his guest. When the blood relative said something that was not too flattering of the way African people look, and the guest said, before you talk to me again, you need to fix this. This very brilliant person studying in the US turned on his family member on behalf of his African American guest. And when the subject of psychological warfare came up and the imagery with which the Catholic Church convinced the world that Jesus was white um, was brought up, uh, the African American said, do you think that if these images had been black that people would look up to white and look down on black today? And the very brilliant student said, no, I don't think they would. And the African American guest said to the brilliant student, did you all know that the prophets were black? The ones that are mentioned by name mostly were black. And they debated about this. And the very brilliant, very intelligent student studying in the US on a scholarship from his government said to the African American guest, well, Yusuf alayhi salam was not black. And the guest said, how do we know he wasn't black? He was in Egypt. And he, he was made government. He looked apparently like the people did. And this was before Musa. Well, by the time that Musa came up, Musa was not known by everybody to be one of the children of Israel. The Egyptians at that time and the children of Israel were black. And the very intelligent student said to the African American guest, no, we know Yusuf was not black because the Quran says he was the most beautiful person in the world, the best looking person in the world. He wasn't black. And he said this very casually, not even thinking about what the hell he was saying. It was a subconscious assumption he had made. Despite his brilliance, he had become stupid in one regard. That's how we're brainwashed. And the African American said, glory to God, you have never been stupid about any subject except this one. Who said that beauty can only come with one color? You just correlated white with beautiful automatically and black with ugliness automatically. This right off the bat. And I told the brilliant student later on, you've been brainwashed. The entire Arab world has been brainwashed. The entire world has been brainwashed. And it hits you too. It hits all of us if we're not careful. Well, now it's your turn to find out that you've been brainwashed so that they can't brainwash you anymore. And he said, are you telling me all Arabs are brainwashed? And I said, yes, all of them are brainwashed except the ones that know that they were brainwashed. Now they're no longer brainwashed. Every last one of them that doesn't know he's brainwashed is brainwashed, every single one. And he said, but we're not stupid enough to be brainwashed. And I asked him, who told you that Yusuf had to be white because the Quran says he was beautiful and never calls him white? Somebody brainwashed you to associate whiteness with that. If you were not brainwashed, genius, if the Arab world is not brainwashed, then this means that the Arab world, that the Arab is naturally the black, the black man's enemy. He's born that way from birth. Out of the mother's womb, he is already programmed with this instinct to be an enemy to black people. If he is not a natural, genetic, born enemy of black people from the womb, then he has to be brainwashed as such. Because the Arab, Arab attitudes about color make you enemies of black people. You were enemies to us. Even if you personally are not my personal enemy, your people are enemies to my people because you got brainwashed or you were born this way. Now, if you were born this way, then the question is, did Allah create you all this way? Which means that 
God loves racism and wants the racists to fight? Or did you train yourselves to become this way over generations and now you're born with it because you've been this way for so many generations? Or were you never born this way but you're brainwashed to become this way? It's one of those three. And one of them is not in the Quran or the Hadith. So that leaves the other two. Either an instinct that is now genetic, but it used to simply be training, and it became genetic over generations, or it's still not genetic, it's strictly by training. Into the subconscious mind, wherein the person begins to think it is an instinct. You see, instincts can be reprogrammed over time, but you're born with them. The subconscious mind can be reprogrammed over time, but you're not born with the contents of your subconscious mind. You learn those. You fill that up. Naturally, we all do. Others fill it up for you. But if you let somebody else determine your assumptions without any sort of analytical thinking, then you will wind up becoming an enemy to people that you were not instinctively an enemy to. I can tell you this. I don't give a rat's behind if the Arab world becomes our enemies or not. I really don't. They already have, actually, without even meaning to, without any hatred, they become an enemy. I don't care if that's the case. I only care about one thing. If the Muslims, any Muslims, are going to become enemies to black people, leave Islam when you do it. Admit that this is not Islam. Leave Islam. Go join a church or a synagogue. And stop trying to hold on to your religion while you're an enemy to people that were not your enemies to begin with. Your subconscious mind will tell on you. Nobody is that smart. You first must know that you have a subconscious mind in order to protect it. When you know you've got one, then you can protect it. But the world does not know that it has one. And therefore, they cannot protect this subconscious mind. In Latin America, the difference is that they know they have a subconscious mind. All people do have one. Not all people know they've got one. Until the day that the Muslims will admit that they've got one and that this is one of the greatest weapons that the devil uses against them, they will always fall victim to this devil. And whatever this, they will believe whatever this devil wants them to believe. And this can allow the subconscious mind to be used as a weapon against the owner of the mind until eventually they associate partners with Allah. I hope that this message has been of benefit. Assalamu alaikum.